Excellent. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of FathomNet GitHub. First, we'll hear from Kevin Barnard, software engineer at Ambari and Fathom FathomNet database administrator. His background is in software development, robot perception and cognition, and machine learning, and first got involved with FathomNet as an undergraduate intern at Ambari in 2018. Today, Kevin is going to tell us about the Python API on the FathomNet GitHub. Take it away, Kevin. Awesome. Thanks so much, Katie. I'll share my screen. OK, cool. I'll trust that you can all see that and hear me OK. All right. Uh, so hi, everybody. Uh, as Katie just said, my name is Kevin Barnard. Uh, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about the FathomNet GitHub, one of the other major components of this FathomNet ecosystem. So I'm going to introduce the GitHub page itself. Uh, and then I'm going to dive into one of the elements there, which is the Python API. Um, and I actually don't have too many slides prepared for, for this, but instead what I'm going to be doing is a little bit of a live code demonstration in Google Colab to show you um, some of the things you can do with this Python API, uh, generating some visualizations and very few lines of code um, to, to show you how, how you can interact with it a little bit. Right. Okay, uh, so the GitHub page itself is available at the link at the top, uh, github.com slash fathomnet. If you're not familiar with GitHub, uh, the basic idea is that on this page, we're providing this collection of repositories, um, which can be home to code, uh, discussions, data registries, uh, auxiliary data like our lo logos, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so as FathomNet continues to grow, you can expect this list of repositories to grow as well. Uh, but really, there's three I want to highlight uh, right now. So the first one is community feedback. Kakani is going to be talking about this one in a little bit, so I'll leave that to her. Uh, and the second one here is FathomNet Pi, the Python API. And this is what I'm going to be demoing a little bit. Third one is the models. This is where our pre-trained models live in the FathomNet models. View. Eric Ornstein is going to be talking about this right up next. Uh, so stay tuned for that. All right. That's the GitHub itself. Um, so let's dive into this Python API, right? So but Python itself is a very popular programming language for doing data science, of course, uh, and in large part, I think, because it lets you transform, process, visualize data in very few lines of code. Um, so we figured, you know, as part of the FathomNet project, we would help with the first step of that, actually getting the data into your hands, into your programs, uh, a lot easier. Right? So um, to that end, what we did is we developed this Python API, called, which we're calling FathomNet Pi, uh, similar to Tater Pi. Right? Uh, so there, there are two major components to this. Uh, the first one is this Python wrapper for calls to the FathomNet REST API. Right? So that web API that uh, Brian was talking about before, this is really just a, a Python wrapper around that. So that instead of writing the HTTP requests yourself in your programs, um, you can just call a particular function in some module in Python, uh, and all of that will be handled the, on the back end by this API automatically. Right? So it simplifies a little bit of the interaction in Python for you. Uh, the second part, which is kind of a follow on to that, is there are these native Python data classes for the FathomNet entities. So your programs can reason through uh, some of the things that we deal with in FathomNet, like images, bounding boxes, taxa, uh, a little more easily and more directly instead of passing around these JSON blobs. Uh, these objects are also smart enough that uh, they can convert in between their Python representation and JSON representation. So uh, if you need to parse FathomNet data from JSON, you can do that in a single command, and you can also save data back out to JSON uh, just as easily. Uh, this Python API is available on the Python package index. So what that means is it's really easy to install if you already have Python. Uh, all you have to do is run one command, pip install FathomNet, and you're good to go, right? You can jump into doing any of these calls um, just like that, right? Uh, last thing I want to say on this page is uh, in the, the Colab demo and uh, in you know, some of the calls you can see here, this is just a, a, the tip of the iceberg, if you will. Uh, there's a whole lot more offered by the Python API, the web API in general. Uh, all the documentation is available here, fathomnet-pi.readthedocs.io. All right, cool. So enough, enough of that. Just want to show you um, a little brief demonstration of some of the things you can do, uh, quick and dirty. Um, and uh, I'm going to be using a technology called Google Colab. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it really just is an easy way for you to, to run little snippets of code uh, interactively. So all you have to do, instead of writing the code or running it um, yourself, all you have to do is click a little button and it'll run through and generate outputs for you. 
Um, so this Google Colab notebook is available on the FathomNet Pi README page, uh, if you get uh, as well as in the agenda. Um, so there's a few ways to, to find this, um, but in case you get lost, really, you're just looking for this, this button here, open in Colab. All right. So I'm going to jump over here to the Python API README page on the GitHub. So um, this is that README page. Uh, if I scroll down here, you can see that same thing. I copied and pasted into the slide as well as this open in Colab uh, button here. So uh, you can click this and that'll take you right into uh, your own instance of the notebook, right? So you can feel free to modify this however you want, uh, change parameters around however it suits your needs best or feel free to leave it as is uh, and everything should run just smoothly. Um, but in case you want to make a copy of this, you can click this button here, copy to drive, and that'll make a personal copy that you can uh, save and reference back to later, right? Uh, so this is a pretty long notebook. Uh, if you're not familiar with Python, this might seem a little intimidating, but the, uh, the basics of this um, is that you, all you have to do is just click this run cell button, uh, click through a couple things here. You, you shouldn't see this message, by the way, this is just for me. Um, but it's just because I've been testing this a whole lot and hit a GPU limit. But anyways, you can click this run button and uh, it will just run whatever code is in that particular cell. Uh, and then it'll show you the outputs right there in the notebook, All right? So I'll, I'll run that pip install command while I'm describing a, a couple of things here. All right, this notebook is split into two parts, um, pretty much halfway down the middle. Uh, the first part is what I'm gonna be covering right now. Uh, showing you a brief overview of the API, how you can use it, the general flow, um, and generating some, some neat data visualizations uh, in a very few lines of code. Um, but then the second part is actually what we're going to cover in the programmer's breakout tomorrow. And that'll be actually how you can pull down images and bounding boxes from FathomNet, train an object detector, we're going to be using RetinaNet, uh, and running inference, uh, both on your freshly trained object detector, as well as uh, one of the pre-trained models available in the FathomNet model suit, right? Uh, but let's let's jump into this then, All right? So as I said, you can install FathomNet Pi uh, just with this one command, pip install FathomNet, and that's what I did right here. So that installed FathomNet right into this notebook. We're gonna run this cell to import some of the visualization tools uh, into the notebook. And all right, cool. So as I said, there's two major components to this. There's these modules which offer different functions that uh, call the respective portions of the web API on the back end, right? So you have bounding boxes, Darwin core images, et cetera, et cetera, All right? Um, how you can get these into your program is just import them from the fathomnet.api module. So you can say from fathomnet.api import images, All right? Once we have that module imported, we can call a function like let's say we have the universal unique identifier already and we just wanna find the image corresponding to that. We can just say images.find by UUID. And that will go ahead, call the FathomNet API. And now we have the example image to play with, all right? As I said, these data models are automatically parsed out. So we can check the type of that image that we got back. And we can see it's this A image DTO, which contains uh, these you know, readily available fields that we can access, right? So we can check the URL of the image, the dot URL, dot latitude, dot longitude, or we can uh, loop over the different bounding boxes here. We can run this and print out, okay, great. The image that we got back has this URL. Check it out really quick. I'll see a couple of things. Um, and then we can you know, see the lat long there uh, and we can see that there are three bounding boxes, right? Uh, last thing in this, uh, this section, um, as I said before, right, we can serialize and deserialize um, to, uh, to and from JSON uh, very easily. So we can just take any of these objects in the Python API and then say dot to JSON or um, dot from JSON. And uh, there you go, right? This, this will quickly give us the full JSON representation, just like you see when you, you download from the website itself. Five minutes, Kevin. Okay, thank you. Um, right. So that's that. Okay, great. So let's check out some of these visualizations. Let's say we wanted to um, find all of the concept or the concepts that have the most bounding boxes in Fathomnet. We could import the bounding boxes module in the API. Um, let's say we want, I don't know, we can choose just the top five for now. I'll let, let you all play around with that. 
Um, and then we can do bounding boxes that count total by concept, right? This will give us all the concepts in FathomNet as well as how many bounding boxes um, that they have. So we'll get those, sort them, and throw them in a bar chart here. We'll run that. And there we go, right? Um, instantly, we have this bar chart of the top uh, five concepts in FathomNet. You can see we have almost 15,000 uh, bounding boxes of fragile urchins. All right. Okay, let's say we wanted to list out all the images for a particular concept, right? Uh, we'll list all the available concepts. We'll pick one and then just get a, a quick list of all those images, right? So we'll import the bounding boxes module. We'll do this find concepts call, which gives us a list of everything that has at least one bounding box, print out how many there are, and then we'll throw them in a combo box. So we'll say, okay, great. We have 1,285 localized concepts and um, let's pick uh, Tanner crabs. All right, so we pick that, and now we're going to actually call this images.findbyconcept function. This will list out all the images that we have of tanagrams. Right now, we'll just grab all those, put them in a list, and print out how many we have. All right, so let's just spin for a few seconds, and there we go, right? We have 1,100 images of tanagrams. Right? All of their data is stored in this big list. So let's pick a random one. Hopefully, this doesn't take too long. Okay, great. So we have a random image that was picked. We actually grabbed it from um, its URL, and now we're just displaying it right here. Cool. So there's the image itself. Let's say we want to draw the bounding boxes over top. Well, we can loop over each of the bounding boxes in that image and then draw a rectangle and the label for it. All right, so we'll do that. And there we go. Okay, I guess we just have one uh, in in this image. Cool. All right. Um, maybe we want to check out some of the ancillary data, like the depth. So we could grab the depth meters field from each image and then put that into a histogram, right? So we can check out for all the images of tanner crabs, right? What, what's the distribution of their depths, right? So there we go. There's an instant uh, histogram of the depths of uh, tanner crab images in FathomNet. Right. And this last visualization, I know we're running short on time, uh, is a geographic heat map. So maybe we want to know where in the world uh, all these images are. Right? So we can grab the latitude and longitude from each of these images, right? where it's available, uh, and then put that into a heat map overlaid on the Esri ocean based map. So we'll run that. And there we go. Right? We have this uh, rendered heat map where we can see uh, you know, where, where a bunch of these images are coming from. Okay, great. Cool. All right, so, um, so that's the end of part one. Uh, part two, we'll pick up tomorrow in the programmer's breakout, uh, and then we'll actually jump into downloading images uh, and bounding boxes and training a model and learning inference as well on some images in FathomNet. All right, that's all I got for you. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much, Kevin. We have one minute if there's one question. Going once, going twice, or we can go straight to Eric. Let's do that. Oh, we have one question from Chloe. We'll do that one. Thanks, Kevin. Are you able to use this to update annotations? Yes. So uh, the, the Python API is a wrapper for every API operation uh, available in the web API. So anything you can do in the web API you should be able to do in the, in the Python API as well. Um, you will have to do some authentication in order to do any right uh, access, but that's that's where you use your API key, as Brian demonstrated before. Great, thank you. Um, there are a couple other questions coming in, but Kevin, if you can keep an eye on those and answer them, so we can move on to Eric. 